One local newspaper man said, Stan Musial is obviously the greatest cardinal, but Jack Buck is the greatest citizen of St. Louis. He was such a presence in that community that it's difficult to really appreciate it unless you were around it. Well, without question, and not just the city of St. Louis, but you think about his station, KMOX, and the reach that it had throughout the Midwest. You're talking about so many people in so many states and so many generations. I think of Jack Buck as the quintessential play-by-play man, right? No pretense, no big-timing anybody. John Miller once called Jack Buck the John Wayne of broadcasting. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because you knew what you were getting. You were getting the truth straight out from Jack Buck. You could trust it. And this isn't a precise comparison, but it'll do for the moment. I think if you want to get a handle on Jack Buck's style, maybe he split the difference between Vin Scully and Harry Carey. Harry Carey, who was in the booth before Jack Buck, and think about the star power in that pairing, Harry Carey and Jack Buck for many years in St. Louis. But Harry was bombastic and bigger than life. Jack was a charismatic personality, but he was more subtle about it. He had a dry wit, and he had some of the literate touch that Vin Scully had, some of the poetic phrasing that just came to him out of nowhere in big moments. I I think you could describe him that way, as splitting the difference. I think that's a great call, Bob. And, And Jack himself said that when he broadcast Cardinal Games with Harry Carey, he thought that was the best pairing ever because they balanced each other out so well. Now, back then in the 60s, though, Harry was the guy. You know, he was more of the showman. And if there was a meaningful game, he wanted to make the calls in the last outs of that game. If it was a no-hitter, he wanted to finish off that no-hitter. Jack just was, it wasn't his personality. And Jack at, at one point acknowledged that, saying that Harry needed those moments. That wasn't really my temperament. So I think the equanimity, the humility, the class of Jack Buck, really came across on air and i think that's why he had the gift of being relatable as a play-by-play guy okay so let's go back to an early jack buck call this is when he's still working with harry carey one of the 475 lifetime home runs hit by stan musial now the batter is musial stan flied to left his first time bob miller goes into the windup and he pitches to musial Inside and a bit upstairs, ball one. Miller is 6-1, weighs 180. Last year, he won one and lost 12. There's a drive by Musial. It's going to be a home run. Musial homered into the pavilion. The second home run of the year, the first hit off of Bob Miller, the first Cardinal run, and they trail now 5-1. to one. Well, the man really got around on one that time. He really corked that ball when it jumped out over the infield you know precisely where that ball was going either on the roof in right center or into the seats early jack buck and relatively late career stan musial you know when i got to listen to jack on a regular basis all the years i spent in st louis the thought occurred to me that if somebody heard jack buck call just one game they would know he was good but tom if they listened to him for a season they would understand why he was great Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And I think especially listening to this call on the the man, as he called him, Stan Musial, you could feel he connected to the players really well, but especially the stars as he saw them develop into premier players. We heard the call on Stan Musial, Bob Gibson, one of his favorites, Bob. And I know we're going to listen to a call on a no-hitter that Bob Gibson threw. To that point in his career, Bob Gibson had done just about everything. World Series hero, Cy Young Award winner, was missing the no-hitter. And I think Jack Buck, in listening to his call, you can hear the emotions of what that meant personally to Jack Buck. 